Hey, thanks for joining me for Perk Stream today on January 18th, 2023. And I have this question. Does Jesus scare you? Hey, this is Pastor Mike. Thanks for joining me for Perk Stream today. I hope you don't think that the question I asked you was meant to be loaded or that there's a, a wrong answer to it. I'm just reflecting on what it means to look at Jesus from different sides and realize that even his disciples at time didn't really get him. And sometimes they were made afraid by what they saw. Last week, we said that we were looking at Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, as Mark starts his gospel. And when Mark starts it that way, he's trying to tell us that Jesus is the only anointed one. He's the only son of God. And so the question becomes, are we going to recognize that and live accordingly? Or are we going to let other, other entities be God or be the son of God and give our allegiance over there? Well, as an extension of that, the, the question is, well, what does it mean for Jesus to be the son of God? We find out that for Jesus to be the Son of God meant that he could operate in great power. And sometimes that power was scary. So in Mark chapter 4, we get this story of the disciples going on an evening cruise across the lake after Jesus had had a long day teaching. And Jesus is in the back of the boat and he's sleeping. And in the right in the middle of this travel, a big wind storm comes up and it's rushing waves over the top of the boat. They're trying to bail the boat. They're trying to do everything they can to keep everything afloat. And what they finally realize is, hey, there's 12 of us bailing and the 13th guy is back there in, he's asleep. And so they go wake up at Jesus and say, don't you care that we drown? Won't you do something? Like join us in bailing. And Jesus gets up and he speaks. He says, peace, be still. Now, here's what it says about the disciples after this happens. See, we're pretty sure they were afraid before that. But what Mark tells us, it says that they were filled with a great fear. And they said to one another, who is this that even the winds and waves obey him? If they were afraid when there was a storm, Jesus's act of calming the storm made them even more afraid because here was this power that overcame the power. See, for them, the winds and the waves were a demonstration of evil. And Jesus stood up and told them to be quiet. And all of a sudden, they are now in the presence of God's power. They haven't quite put it together yet that they're in the presence of God, but they are certainly in the presence of somebody who has the power of God. And if that kind of power broke into our life in any way, if, if something happened that um, was in front of our eyes that was that powerful and that miraculous, wouldn't we be a little bit frightened too? Maybe that's just me. But I guess I look at, at this, I'm going, oh God, I really hope. And I would pray that if I saw that kind of power, that I would move from fear to worship, that I would be in awe of what happened and then would just understand, yes, you God have done something incredible and miraculous. So what I would also encourage us here is that we continue to pray. Maybe we even come to God. Maybe you're feeling anxious or you're feeling weighed down or you're feeling like, like things are not the way you want them to be. And you go to God and say, can't you help us? Can't you see that we're drowning under this, under this sea of, of problems? Can't you see that the evil one's really getting after us? And, and say, help us. But here's the thing. When God moves, be prepared to be just a little bit scared, or maybe a lot bit scared, but don't plan to stay there. Plan to move on into awe and worship, because that is the right response to when God breaks into our lives. We have a place to go. We have a place to go when we realize that Jesus Christ exerted great power by containing that power and not using that power to save himself, but going to the cross and dying for our sin. And then power was used to raise him from the dead. That's remarkable. And that's the power that can be at work in us and for us. 
but we might just be a little bit scared if we saw it happen. So when it happens, brothers and sisters, let's be in awe of the Lord and let's turn and worship him. Let's recognize him for who he is and recognize he's done it. We don't have to minimize it. We don't have to dismiss it. We don't have to explain it away. We have the opportunity to say the Lord has done this and it's marvelous in our eyes. Take that little chunk of, of uh, reflection and think about it as you think about who Jesus is. And I'll see you next week. <music>